Hello everybody, I'm David Barber and welcome to this event about doing a PhD in AI in the UK. So I thought I'd just uh, tell you a little bit first about the kinds of opportunities we're talking about. And I should say that today we're focused actually a lot on how to get more women uh, into doing AI in PhDs in the UK and actually to discuss the, the challenges and also provide a, a forum for people to discuss uh, issues about that as well. So um, before we get into all of that, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what a CDT is, a Center for Doctoral Training, and what these opportunities look like here. So just let me try to share my screen. And yeah, so, so as I said, I'm David Barber. I'm the director of the UCL AI Center. And I'm going to talk uh, for a few minutes first about uh, what CDT centers for doctoral training are. Um, and these are quite special uh, things, actually. So the first of all, um, you know, we really want to try to get a platform uh, going today, which is about, you know, trying to understand what the opportunities are for people to do a PhD in the UK. And uh, also, you know, you'll have a chance to then talk to the individual PhD training centers around the UK. And I'm happy to say that 10 uh, people uh, or 10 different centers will be, will be joining us today, which is great. And these uh, opportunities though today are around the CDT, the Center for Doctoral Training. Uh, there are other opportunities to do a PhD in the UK, but we're just talking about these today, okay? Um, like I said, that this will also provide a platform today for people to discuss more about the topic of women in AI. And there will be uh, panel presentations, there'll be keynotes and uh, an opportunity to also ask your questions to people as well. Um, we're extremely thankful uh, to the organization Women in AI who've helped co-organize this event and also to the participating CDTs as well. So I should say that we are here, I'm at UCL, uh, University College London, and we just thought it might be good to organize this event because we have a, a lot of common uh, challenges and uh, interests across all of the CDTs in the UK. And we collectively thought it might be good for us to, to host this event on behalf of everyone. So what is a Center for Doctoral Training, a CDT? Well, increasingly, UK government is trying to focus its training efforts into what it calls centers of excellence. And these centers will actually have a critical mass of researchers and students and associated resources to go with them. For example, computational resources, uh, data resources, whatever those might be required. And the philosophy is very much a cohort, a group-based training idea. So, the government is providing actually additional income specifically to make training elements which are not ordinarily available elsewhere. So for example, there might be retreats that uh, the CDTs will be organizing. There might be specialized placements in government or industry. Um, there might be certain kinds of international collaborations, uh, partnerships, et cetera, with external organizations too and many other uh, sort of suggestions and ways to help do group-based cohort uh, training. Now, the government is providing money and, and specifically to help uh, facilitate all these training programs. So it's very much you know, up to us as CDTs to, to make an exciting and interesting program. And this will be you know, not normally available to students outside of CDT training. So this is not something you could ordinarily otherwise get access to. Um, so each of the CDTs will have a slightly different take on this, they'll have different flavors for how to do their training, but uh, it will all be cohort based from the CDTs. So it's also very important to bear in mind then that a CDT is not just a funding body to give PhD funding to the student and to their supervisor, it's really for a, you know, a cohort based uh, training program for which you know, the student will participate uh, actively with other students in that training program. So they both con contribute to and will benefit from that cohort-based uh, training program. Okay, so there are many CDTs uh, in different disciplines across the UK, but today we're talking about the ones in AI. And in 2019, 
the UK government released about 100 million pounds of funding to support these new CDTs in AI. And uh, around, uh, well, actually 16 CDTs were selected uh, with around 300 industry partners. And I'm happy to say that 10 of those 16 CDTs are going to be participating today. And uh, so this is quite a big investment from the UK government. And uh, the project partners themselves are also putting quite a substantial amount of money, around 78 million pounds as well. And the universities will also be contributing uh, uh, funding to this as well, around about 23 million pounds. So in total, this is a, a UK uh, investment of around 200 million pounds in training uh, PhD students in, in AI. So this is a pretty big commitment. Uh, you know, obviously everybody's very keen to, to make this work as well as we can do, uh, but it's also something that, you know, we need your feedback on to, to make it uh, as good as we can do and make it as inclusive as we can do. Okay, so uh, of the 16 CDTs in AI, 10 are participating today. Uh, there are actually from, you know, the whole uh, range of the country, uh, so we've got a few in London, a couple here from UCL, this one in foundational AI, uh, this one in, in healthcare and AI, King's Imperial College have uh, paired up to do one in trusted AI, Queen Mary also in London, uh, got a, a CDT in AI and music, then going a little bit outside of London, London's down here, we've got uh, Cambridge, they're doing environmental risks in AI, we've got Bath down here, they're doing accountable, responsible, and trustworthy AI. Uh, we've got Edinburgh, got a couple up here. I've got one in biomedical AI and another one in natural language processing. And then going back down here, we've got uh, Bristol. They have an interactive AI and finally Southampton down here doing nano AI. So there are a few others that are not participating today, uh, but these uh, are the 10 CDTs in AI that are participating today. Okay, so that's what a, a CDT is in, in, a, in a broad sense. And I wanted to sort of uh, quickly go over those 10 CDTs. I'm going to just uh, have a few slides on each of them. I'm not going to read out all the details. Uh, these will obviously be available for you to uh, read in more detail yourselves, but I just hope to give you a flavor of what each of those 10 CDTs uh, is doing. So the first one I'm going to tell you about is the one here that I'm the director of at UCL, the CDT in foundational AI. So why did we decide to do this? Well, we have the feeling that AI is very much far from being sold and that you know, there's a lot of exciting uh, research yet to be done in, in AI itself. And actually, you know, most uh, real advances in AI, uh, foundational advances, could actually stimulate a business opportunity as well. So, you know, if you can make, for example, uh, an algorithm which can recognize speech much more effectively than previously, or translate documents more effectively, or for example, maybe generate videos or analyze, um, say the um, communications traffic, et cetera, more effectively than previously, then there are business opportunities there as well. So we think that, you know, we can take those advances and make uh, impact with them in the, in the real world, either through businesses, eventually societal impact uh, be stimulated through the businesses as well. As well. So um, the CDT in foundational AI is it's hosted uh, here at UCL in the AI center. That's so I've got more than hundred researchers and we've got a pretty strong rec track record of translating foundational advances in AI into startups and, and uh, into industry themselves. So, uh, we've got a whole bunch of uh, partners that's going to be supporting us to, to do this. So who are we looking for in terms of students to join us on the CDT? We're looking for students who've got a passion that for, they want to address really you know, grand challenges in, in AI. We think that's really exciting still. And we're very keen to have students who want to use these skills to really make the world a better place. UCL has a very strong um, sort of foundation in wanting to support uh, people and we really want uh, to encourage students who have a, a similar kind of feeling to, 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 to join this program. We're looking for students with a strong technical background and by that I mean uh, ideally a, ma a mathematical background and also a master's or equivalent 
in machine, machine learning or, or a closely related area. Additionally, you, you might have interest in neuroscience, statistics or engineering, or again, closely related to that. And again, here's a bunch of other uh, companies and partners that are helping us to, to achieve this. So yes, please uh, you know, do get in touch if you're interested in, in doing this. The other one I want to, to talk about next is another one from UCL. And this is the AI Center uh, for uh, AI in Healthcare. So officially it's the UK RI Center for Doctoral Training in Artificial Intelligence Enabled Healthcare. So the motivation for this is that AI has the potential to transform health and healthcare systems globally. Uh, but you know, people don't yet maybe have the skills in, a, in order to, be, to do that. Uh, so they want to use this uh, platform, the CBT, to train future leaders to solve the most pressing healthcare challenges. They have a whole bunch of uh, partners here. Again, you, know, you can talk to the individual CBTs to get more information and contact them. So I'm just going to give you a flavor for what these CBTs are. Ideally, the ideal student profile looks like this. They have a demonstrable interest in creating, developing, or evaluating AI-enabled healthcare systems strong computation skills, and ideally a master's in a relevant discipline with additional uh, partners down here as well. So uh, the next one I'm going to talk about is Cambridge's UKRI Center for Doctoral Training in AI for Environmental Risks. And this is in partnership with others, including the British Antarctic Survey. So um, this is going to train around 50 students over five cohorts. Uh, that will actually be uh, fairly standard. So all of the uh, CDTs have got uh, five years of initial funding. Uh, it's in the sense that every, every year for the next five years, uh, a cohort, a group of students will be admitted. And so the PhDs will typically also last uh, four years each as well. And so Cambridge will be training around 50 students over those uh, five uh, intakes, uh, over 30 industry partners, and they're going to have a very much an industry-led approach uh, with uh, challenges and hackathons and a whole host of interesting partners and uh, organizations here. So the aims of the program is that they believe that world-leading training uh, can be used to tackle environmental challenges across weather, climate and air quality, natural hazards, uh, natural resources, food, water, and resource security and biodiversity, hands-on and in-depth experience and, apply, and guidance in developing and applying AI methods. So who are they looking for? So Cambridge is looking for people with a strong science, computer science or engineering background with experience or awareness of how AI methods can be applied to address environmental risks. And people who want to drive uh, and have the drive to become a global leader to safeguard the natural environment, a passion to innovate and apply creative thinking to, to deliver real world impact. So the director of this is Emily Schuckberg, and she's uh, going to be uh, you know, directing this program. And I'm sure Emily will be happy to help answer your questions. The next one up is the Center for Doctoral Training in AI and Music. And this is run by Queen Mary University, also in London. So this is a PhD program aimed at music and audio technology and the creative industries. And it's uh, called AI plus music. So the research focus is the following. I won't go through all this, but essentially they want to try to understand music better, um, have better interfaces uh, with music instruments and uh, also try to use AI to generate music, for example, computational creativity. Uh, so these are the sort of main three strands that they are uh, interested in researching. And the pillars in terms of the, the training is that they have a bunch of uh, talk modules, which will happen the first uh, two, two years. And there's researcher uh, development training throughout the whole four years with a cohort uh, training based approach. Uh, industry placement, typically uh, year two or three, and your PhD will be throughout the whole four years. So they're looking ideally for people with a musical audio technology background and a, a, a you know, computer science and machine learning and the coding background. 
as well. So I should say also that um, you know many of the the, the the different CDTs will have slightly different ways of doing the training. So uh, sometimes, for example, the first year might be a master's or a master's by research, and then you might follow that on with a dedicated three years of um, PhD training or PhD research. Um, but actually, others might just have a straight four-year program. So, for example, in my own CDT, it's just a straight four-year program. There's no initial first year. Uh, with a master's by research or some such, but others will will be operating slightly uh, differently. Okay, next up is uh, we've got Edinburgh and the biomedical AI. So this is uh, again a four funded uh, studentship, and this will cover the you know, tuition etc. Uh, for the whole thing. What are they doing? Um, you know they're looking at cutting edge biomed biomedical research. Uh, you know, spanning uh, AI, biomedicine, and social sciences. They've got 12 uh, places available for entry in 2021, and the deadline is the 14th of December in 2020. So um, they've got a whole range of uh, projects uh, across Edinburgh, including also uh, training elements, research visits, internships, uh, collaborative pro projects with partners uh, and other research groups across the world. Um, there'll also be training in public engagement, entrepreneurship, et cetera, and a variety of uh, masterclasses, summer schools, et cetera. So these are the kinds of additional training elements that I mentioned in the introduction. Uh, most CDTs will have you know, something like this. Obviously, they will vary between the CDTs, but uh, all CDTs will be trying to get these additional cohort-based training elements, such as, uh, such as these kinds of things. We've got a whole... Um, you know, a bunch of partners and they have uh, you know, great uh, state-of-the-art facilities. So they're looking to um, deliver interdisciplinary research uh, across uh, biomedicine and AI, new approaches uh, to try to understand insight into the molecular drivers of disease, um, to make a very interdisciplinary training environment, uh, to establish a culture of responsible research and uh, communication and to become or to train students also to become you know very familiar with the whole range of topics related to this around ai also the uh, impact in the social sciences ethics and law as well so they are looking for students with uh, at least a 2-1 honors degree or equivalent in computer science mathematics physics biomedical science engineering or social sciences or related discipline you're expected to demonstrate the capacity to undertake master's level courses, machine learning, uh, et cetera. And so you need some uh, proficiency and skills in basic statistics, uh, introductory machine learning, et cetera. Uh, you may also have a background uh, which is relevant. For example, you may have done statistics uh, or you know, things like data science and uh, et cetera, or you might've develop some of these skills through uh, work experience or other training elements in your career. Moving on next to Bristol. Uh, this is Peter Flex uh, Interactive AI. So it's officially called uh, the AI uh, Interactive AI Center for the Whole Training. The motivation for this center is to train the next generation of innovators in human in the loop AI systems to uh, responsibly solve societally important problems. They have got a whole host of partners, more than 25 industry partners. It's highly interdisciplinary, over 100 potential research supervisors across the university and established in 2019. So they've currently already got 20 students uh, and they'll be getting their uh, next cohort coming in uh, for in 2021. So this is some of the partners they've got here uh, of the 25. Um, ideally, they're looking for students with a passion to explore and solve societal problems, have strong interpersonal skills, a strong desire to learn from and teach others. I think this is a really, you know, a very important point. Uh, as I mentioned briefly in the, in the introduction, uh, CDC is very much cohort-based training programs. So, uh, you know, people who are very happy to sit in that group-based training environment uh, and contribute to that as well are very, very helpful. And uh, that's really uh, you know, key to making this whole uh, CDT cohort-based training a success. Uh, for the Bristol one, they're uh, ideally having a desire to be 
an innovative leader in the field and did a high quality first degree at least in a relevant subject, for example, computer science, mathematics, physics, um, and strong technical abilities, programming, software engineering skills, some level of sophistication in linear algebra, probability, stats, and discrete mathematics. Okay, next, uh, this is another one from Edinburgh. And this is from the Department of Informatics, uh, but it's also in conjunction with the School of Philosophy, Psychology, and Language Sciences. So this is the Center for Doctoral Training in Natural Language Processing. So what is NLP? It's a field of computer science and AI concerned with enabling computers to analyze and generate natural language text. And here are some specifics of so this NLP for things like uh, machine translation, uh, information retrieval, sentiment analysis, information extraction, and question answering. These are all topics within the broader area of NLP. Uh, why should you come to Edinburgh? Uh, they've got the biggest concentration of NLP researchers nationally and internationally. This PhD program combines research and training over four years. That's uh, standard for all the CDTs. Uh, students learn together in cohorts. Again, that would be standard. Our CDT brings together a broader community, including industry, academia, and the public. As I mentioned, it's a partnership between these two schools, School of Mathematics and uh, uh, the PPLS school. And uh, basically their scope is very broad, computation and language, and they've got a bunch of impressive partners. And that's it, yeah. So um, moving on to the next one is a collaboration between King's College and Imperial College, both in London, the UK RI Centre for Doctoral Training in Safe and Trusted AI. So these are some of the, the challenges for, for AI technologies. They are increasingly ubiquitous, so they have the potential to fundamentally change all aspects of our lives. However, there are serious concerns about the safety and trustworthiness of current AI technologies. Uh, so, for example, there's a lack of assurance over AI system behavior, explainability is a problem. Uh, basically, the decisions don't always appear to adhere to social norms. Uh, sometimes there's uh, issues with bias in the uh, way the algorithms are trained or used and sometimes the decisions are not even understandable by the engineers that, that created these solutions. So um, this CDT is going to you know, aim to train the next or the first generation of AI scientists and engineers in uh, sort of methods of safe and trusted AI. It's going to focus actually on the use of symbolic AI for ensuring the safety and trustworthiness of AI so this is a little bit different uh, to you know, many of the more sort of uh, pre prevalent uh, sort of deep learning, non-symbolic approaches currently. There'll be uh, at least 12 studentships available each year and you'll need an MSc distinction in computer science or the discipline. They're also happy to talk to people who have a non-standard background, for example, from industry and you're returning, uh, you know, want to return to academia. These are their application deadlines, 22nd of November uh, this year and 21st of March next year. So um, the next one I'm going to talk about is from the University of Bath. Uh, this is called the Accountable, Responsible and Transparent uh, AI, Art AI. They're going to be training students to become specialists with perspectives, knowledgeable in both the applications and the implications of AI. So they're gonna be as uh, usual around 10 uh, fully funded PhD students, studentships available each year for the next uh, four to five years for, for students from uh, computer science, engineering, and social sciences. And they're going to be researching the following themes, how to make AI systems intelligible and open to inspection public policy uh, with AI, public policy design with and for AI, how to risk, assess the risks and benefits of AI, safety and trust in human machine interactions, innovation of policy driven, explainable and auditable AI and responsible application of AI. Uh, again, these are some of the, the partners they have uh, both in the UK and elsewhere. They are looking for the following kind of students, uh, students from diverse perspectives and backgrounds including engineering, social science and some policy, uh, to have to have a demonstrable interest in working across and between disciplines, 
and students have taken a mathematics or a quantitative methods unit at university or have grade B in A-level maths at least or international equivalent. And finally, we have University of Southampton, the UKRI CDT uh, called MINES, which is, stands for Machine Intelligence for Nano Electronic Devices and Systems. Uh, Tim Norman is the director there. So um, this is um, set in a high profile center, uh, the UK uh, Industrial Strategy. Uh, so it's uh, sort of focusing the, this uh, whole thing, so supporting it. It's um, a unique training and research uh, uh, in a dedicated lab. Uh, supervision from AI and engineering experts are designed around you. And MINDS is the only AI CDT with a focus on AI and engineering in the UK. And there are internships with both industry and government. There's going to be an annual innovation camp as well. So that's, again, this is a kind of, you know, cohort-based training element that you will see in the CDTs, which are, you know, you won't necessarily find in other non-CDT training programs. And as with other folks, they've got a whole bunch of impressive uh, partners here. So apply if you are creative, innovative, with good attention to detail, able to work with diverse people and communities, enthusiastic about working at the AI and electronics interface, interested to develop systems with beneficial human impact, and you have a good undergraduate degree in computer science, electronics, or closely related to subject, for example, mathematics or physics. Okay, folks, so um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Um, so I hope you found that useful. That was a very brief introduction to what is the concept of the CDT and 10 of the 16 CDTs actually uh, in, in AI, which are currently available in the UK. Please do uh, ask questions and feel free to contact any of the people. You'll, see, you'll have seen most of the contact details there on the slides. Uh, there's a very friendly bunch of people we're also very interested in you know, how to increase diversity. So again, please uh, do get in touch if you have any ideas uh, or feedback on today's event. Thank you very much.